Hello YouTube, my name's Nero and today we use some Call of Duty Advanced Warfare in another episode of DNA Saturday, which is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in DNA bombs. That was the Korea class we're using throughout the entirety of this video. I urge you all to go back and pause that if you would like to get a better look at it, and that way you can kind of make that class and replicate it for yourselves in your own game and try it out that way. But of course, throughout the entirety of the video, I am going to be talking about the Korea class, the gun selection, the weapon variant, the perk setup, and all that kind of stuff that we usually do here on DNA saturday so this gameplay was pretty nice it was sent in by a guy that goes by the name of mr hardcore who is a first time uh, guest here on my channel he was not featured during chem strike saturday at all last year it's crazy that i can remember all the people that have been on that show there's so there's hundreds of episodes i can remember all the different people that were on there he's a first time guest here on my channel he was not on chem strike saturday at all last year with call of duty ghosts and this is his first time appearing on dna saturday so welcome welcome to the club the elite few the elite few people that have been featured on my channel welcome to that and what we got going on here here is a game of Kill Confirmed here on the map Retreat. It's almost like it's Retreat Week here on DNA Saturday. So the first episode was Domination on Retreat. This one is Kill Confirmed on Retreat. But they're both entirely different games. You know, different lobbies, different people, different stuff going on, different guns. And I thought it was pretty cool. As well as we have a third episode of DNA Saturday that's going, that's going to be going up tonight. That is not going to be on the map Retreat. So keep an eye out for that. For this gameplay here, I'm going to start talking about a little bit the strategy that we're going to be seeing throughout this. Is right now, he is at what I call the Towers. Now... I almost made an offensive joke, like when I was thinking up, when I was watching this gameplay and I was like kind of trying to break down in his head what I was doing, I was like, ah, so he's over there at the Twin Towers, huh? And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not cool, I can't call him the Twin Towers, that, that, that's wrong. So what do I call this area? There's basically these two tower things over here. There's two towers right next to each other, and people always like to stand on top of them. I'm like, well, what do I call these things? I have no idea. But he's over here by the towers, I'm not going to call him the Twin Towers, I'm just saying there's two towers that are right next to each other here, and he basically, throughout the majority of the gameplay, sticks around over here because even though it's kill confirmed right and they kill confirmed you guys will know there's basically no set spawn points for the most part it's basically just spawn everybody everywhere everybody shoots each other and first team to collect all the tags wins see that's the basis of kill confirmed but for whatever reason the opposing team is really getting a lot of spawns over there towards the cave almost similar to it if you had like a spawn trap going at the sea flag and domination right so for the majority of it he's gonna be hanging out on top of this tower and it's kind of funny right because the other team team seems completely oblivious to the fact that he's up here and this guy's climbing a ladder who climbs a ladder in advanced warfare it's not like they're playing you know like the the special uh, non-exosuit playlist or anything like that what do they call it the classic playlist or something it's not even like they're doing that they're playing the standard playlist and that guy was climbing a ladder I think that's a, a there's a first time for everything I guess but I've never actually seen people do that now one interesting little quirk I would say about this particular gameplay is when he plays apparently he doesn't have the voice enabled at all meaning the announcer's voice is not there anymore whenever he calls in a bombing run whenever anything happens you don't hear the voice announcer actually saying anything you don't hear like losing C you don't hear kill confirmed you don't hear enemy UAV spotted or anything like that so I think was maybe is going on throughout this gameplay because not right now but later on in the gameplay You'll be seeing, he goes back to that tower, and tons of people are constantly swarming him, but they never seem to realize he's there, so I'm wondering if perhaps, if perhaps, his team has been calling in system hacks a lot throughout this gameplay, and we're just not hearing the fact that the system hacks are actually being called, so the team is oblivious because, you know, there's a system hack up and they don't have hardwired on. Perhaps that is the case. Perhaps that is the case. I really can't tell. And you, I should also note that he's running some lethal kill streaks in this gameplay, and he gets a lot of kills of those, which is pretty cool. He's also running the automated warbird, which I thought was pretty interesting. So. You guys give me suggestions all the time uh, to try out different things here in Advanced Warfare. One of the biggest ones, which I kind of took to heart and I actually really think it's great, is people suggested to me, Nero, try out peripherals. Try out the peripheral perk. And to me, it's like, why would I want that? It basically just makes the minimap a little bit bigger. It doesn't seem that beneficial. Then I started using it, and I was like, good, good God. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> well, I was not aware of this. Like, I can see so much more. And it's great. And I love peripherals, so I definitely try that out. A lot of people said, Nero, run support UAV over the regular UAV. And I'm like, but I feel so maybe I'd get more UAVs if I ran the normal variant, you know? And then I, I, started, I started running support UAV, and it turns out you guys worry about that as well. You know, the support UAV is definitely way better than the than the regular UAV. So I'm, I'm taking people's suggestions on stuff, and, you know, maybe, just maybe, I'll try out the automated warbird. Because people have suggested to me, Nero, it's basically the equivalent of, like, a pave lower, at least 
least an attack helicopter. And like, you should try that out because I expressed many times I don't think the Warbird itself is a very good kill streak. So I'm like, all right, all right, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. So maybe I'll try that out. But right now we're at the point of the gameplay where he's already on 30 plus kill streak. And this is the part where you're gonna be seeing all these people with the UAV with the threat detection on, and you're gonna be like, how did they not go for him? Some people end up doing it, but for the most part, a lot of people really seem to ignore the fact that he's up here. Before this gameplay wraps up, which we're actually rapidly approaching that deadline, let's actually talk about the Korea class a little bit here, if I may. So we're using EM1, and the variation we're going to be using is actually going to be called the end, which the end variation actually increases the range by two, but it actually uh, detracts the accuracy and the handling each by one. So it basically gives you a lot more range, which can be pretty powerful and pretty helpful. The attachments he's using is Heat Sink, which Heat Sink is very powerful on laser weapons. It's actually only available to laser weapons, of course, where basically it makes it so you can hold down the trigger longer without your weapon overheating, make it so you can spray and pray a little bit more. He's also using the uh, hybrid sight, which is basically over glorified red dot sight, which I've never really found too much use in that. And he's got the foregrip, which you can't really argue with a foregrip. In terms of perks, he's using low profile, which I don't think you can argue, argue low profile is always a beneficial perk in a respawn game mode. He's got blind eyes, so you can stay off uh, the detection from like uh, kill streaks, things like that, which is a perk I don't personally use. But then again, I usually play with a party of my friends, so having enemies calling in, calling in like lethal score streaks on, on us is not usually like an issue. He's also using scavenger and blast suppressor, which once again, man, scavenger, it does not make any sense. One, it doesn't make sense because I just don't think scavenger is a very beneficial perk. Two, this gun doesn't consume ammo. Why are you using scavenger? <laughs> you know, the gun doesn't consume any ammo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, you're using scavenger on a laser weapon, this, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So if you're going to try and replicate this class, may I just suggest to all of you, don't have scavenger on there. Why? What, what I think ended up happening was he had another class. And God, he is just outgunning everybody right now. And he gets a DNA bomb right there. If I were to make a guess as to what he was doing uh, with his classes, he probably had this class set up for a different weapon. Then he changed it to the EM1, but just didn't end up changing off scavenger. I imagine that's how it ended up going down. But yeah, our man here is actually using scavenger on a laser weapon, which of course does not actually consume ammo. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I didn't actually catch that until I started recording this commentary. I have, you know, I have the screenshots of the Kray class. I have everything already set up and stuff i'm like wait a minute that just now hit me He's using scavenger on the laser weapon. Doesn't make any sense. So definitely switch that out for toughness. Definitely do that. But uh, here we are, finally, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the gameplay. Look at that score. Look at that score line right there. 61 and 1. The opposing team was oblivious to him the entirety of the gameplay, and I thought it was enjoyable to watch. As well as just that weapon looks so cool. It's got the it's got the yellow laser. It's got the yellow gun. It just it looks so good, man. It definitely looked good. Well, that was an awesome episode of DNA Saturday. I must say, thank you to Mr. Hardcore for submitting that gameplay. I definitely enjoyed watching it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it as well, because that's the whole point of the video, right? Is to get a cool video out for you guys. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of DNA Saturday. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel the video deserves. And if you guys would like to submit your guys' videos for next week's episode of DNA Saturday, watch this video I have on your screen right now. So there's an annotation that'll take you over to the video, as well as there's a link to it down in the video description, and you guys can go watch it. That video, I give you all the rules I'd like you guys to abide by when you're submitting your gameplay to me for DNA Saturday, as well as I give you some helpful and informative tips as a specific things I'm looking for when I'm combing over all the gameplays every single week and making my selections for features for that week's episode of DNA Saturday. So go watch that video if you are interested in submitting your stuff for DNA Saturday. If you guys would like to go ahead and check out Mr. Hardcore, once again, just to reiterate, he is a first time guest here on my channel, so you guys probably haven't heard of him before. You can find him in the link in the video description, so he doesn't actually have a channel URL. So, if you guys don't know, ever since, like, the Google Plus update, whenever you make a new channel, uh, instead of, like, right away making yourself a URL, it basically assigns you, like, a bunch of random letters and numbers. Then you have to go into, like, your YouTube settings or something or other, and then actually assign yourself a URL and make your own one from there. And he apparently hasn't done that yet, which we've had many times, if you guys remember last year for Campsite Saturday, a lot of people's channels, uh, they haven't done that, because it's not exactly easy to figure out where that kind of thing is. It's kind of actually kind of difficult to get yourself a URL here on YouTube. So it doesn't actually have a URL yet, so you can click the annotation on your screen, it'll take you to his channel, or you can click the link down in the video description, it'll take you to his channel, but right now his channel name is basically a bunch of random numbers and letters all thrown together by the Google Plus system. Over on his YouTube channel, you will find Call of Duty. Now what his channel basically is, he is a channel that basically uploads DNA bombs or like 100 kill gameplays or vicious metals, which you guys will know a vicious metal is the equivalent of a 30 kill streak here in Advanced Warfare, but it's not just a 30 gun streak 
streak. It's a 30 kill streak with the help of kill streaks. So, like, basically, you go on a 30 kill streak, then you get the vicious medal, then you start getting all kinds of other medals after that. He basically posts really cool, really awesome gameplay. It's one of those channels that doesn't actually do any commentary. Occasionally, he'll put music on there, but for the most part, you're getting raw, uncut, unedited gameplay of him getting DNA bombs or him getting you know, crazy high scoring gameplay and things of that nature. Now, to some people, I can see how that's actually interesting. For me personally, every single week, I go over submissions for DNA Saturday, as well as I watch submissions for Chem Strike Saturday last year. So I've watched a ton of Call of Duty gameplays here on YouTube that had no commentary on whatsoever. And I actually can see how it would be enjoyable for some people to watch that kind of thing, just because when you're watching it without the distraction of somebody doing commentary over it, I think you get a better understanding of what's going on in the gameplay and the strategies that are actually being implemented. So you may actually get a better, you may have a better viewing experience by the fact that there's no commentary on it. Who knows? But that is what his channel is. I can't really talk that more than that. It's a YouTube channel that's got some videos on it, and they're all DNA bombs or 100 plus kill gameplays or crazy stuff like that with either no commentary or music. That is his YouTube channel. If you guys did go ahead and check that out, you guys can definitely go ahead and do that. I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of DNA Saturday, and if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.